Here we go, John Conroy burns him on the outside. Time for a try. Rappi. Yes. Both the Irk and now even Super Rugby had games this past weekend. Let's push the buy of that cause down with a nice soothing helping of Six Nations. Alas, I could not catch much of Italy hosting Ireland this past weekend. Most likely because I was on my knees begging my toddler to stop screaming because the sky is too blue or water is too wet. The small bits of rugby I could catch showed Italy being able to keep the ball for more phases than ever and even kind of breaking down the Irish defence with a fast and varied attack. What a difference a truly world class 10 makes, eh? I am loath to pick on just one player, but Stephen Varney has been playing like the 21 years of age that he is. The ball often dies at the ruck because he's too slow or error prone. Ireland was also gaining a lot of ground on Padovani's side of the field. They both will have to take the L and learn from it. I guess we'll be repeating the this Italian side is young, give them more timeline for a few more years. Ireland is Ireland. Bloody good at rugby when Johnny's activated. Good to pretty damn good when Ross Byrne is led out from under the staircase. They'll know that they did not perform to their full potential this past weekend, but a lot of that can be attributed to the improving Italians, which is awesome. Wales versus the Springboks. Did I say Springboks? I meant British and Irish Lions against England. No, that's not right. Oh, Wales versus England. Okay, there we go. Pragmatic could be the word used to describe the game plans we saw on Saturday. Afraid to lose is also a phrase that comes to mind. These two teams seem to look at the other's defense and just decide, no, we're not making it past three rucks against these guys. Just kick it until it cries. As in their previous two games, the English just hoofed it better. Freddie Stewart just had a field day catching bomb after bomb. The host's chase was no match for the English Shepherd runners and the visitors kicking game was keeping them in the Welsh side of the field. If not for intercept try, Wales might have been kept to three points. Owen Farrell had another and recently more regular kicking meltdown. Luckily it didn't matter and I rate him to get better if he keeps getting picked at 10. Though I could be wrong, who knows. Wales, uh, they showed up, that's a win right? I can't really remember much distinct about their game. England just dominated them in the contact and their ball got slower and slower the more phases they played. A kicking heavy game ended with a more accurate England taking the spoils in Cardiff. I don't really want to bag on Wales too much. They have more to do off the field than on it right now. France versus Scotland was mad as a hatter. Two red cards, France running in intercept tries, Damien Pinot was there, Scotland fighting back like only they can, and Russell showing why so many people call him Mercurial. Ow! It started with France looking well pissed that their pack was beaten by Ireland. Their first try was just a series of massive French forwards running into backpedaling Scottish defenders until they scored. That momentum carried them into a 19-0 lead after just 25 minutes. Then the best combo since before Hugh and Sione came back to life. Hugh and Finn started the comeback with a couple of tries and it was properly game on. At 79 minutes there were still only 3 points in it. I was rooting for Scotland to cause a massive upset but it was clear that France were the better side. They played the territory game better and put the result to bed with a late game winner. As we head into the break week, poor old Wales are still propping up the table. They will be heading to Rome to 5th place Italy as underdogs for the first time ever. The newly refilled Peugeot T16s will be taking on the English Leylands at Twickenham. And finally the racy Scots will be taking on the even racy Island in a must watch game at Murrayfield. Let's hope for dry weather. News. They don't make it like they used to. The British and Irish Lions. No, not them. Them. Apparently a long term feasibility study has concluded that it's a pretty good time to try and put together a women's Lions tour. Granted there are still many steps to go through before we even get to a tour like sponsorships and logistics and even calendar space. I think it's a great idea. More rugby. And the proposed destinations like New Zealand and France and Canada are pretty cool. It might even lead to South Africa and Australia accelerating their women's programs just so they can get a sweet taste of that BNI pie. Mm. The biggest question I've seen come up is the makeup of the team itself. Mostly like, Duh! won't it just be English players? Duh! Valid question. Firstly, the tour is not happening tomorrow. There's still lots of time for the other home nations to improve their rugby before a tour might maybe happen. Secondly, what if the men's team toured tomorrow? Boo! Wanna just be the Irish team? Boo! Sorry, 
Final bit of news. He's back. After almost an entire World Cup cycle in knee rehabs and fire safety training seminars, Archie Sneeman is back for selection at Munster. As a box supporter, this is good news. As a Irk watcher, this is good news. As a person who just wants to see Archie do what he's best at, this is good news. I cannot wait to see the Viking giant back in action. And I can't wait to end this week's rugby update right now boiling in here. I will see you all next week so we can talk about some disgusting domestic rugby since it's another fallow week for the Six Nations. We'll get through this together. Bye.